got another big conference game coming up uh, this week at home against FAU. Really fired up for that opportunity. Should be a great conference game. Uh, you know, we're head to head in the East right now between us, Marshall, and FAU. So this is a big one. Uh, guys are looking forward to it and uh, can't uh, wait to get them in here. And also, it's a, a game, too. Uh, we're having uh, donations uh, for canned food drives for our game this week. And uh, anybody who brings in three canned goods will uh, get a free ticket to the game to help local families and uh, schools here in Bowling Green. So. Uh, just wanted to remind everybody of that, but really need our fans to come out, support us, because this is going to be a big one. And with that being said, questions? And the response from this team after this loss where it was so close and right there, you got to on the street for a while. So obviously, it's probably a different attitude and mindset. I tell you, the guys really handled it like pros. They really didn't bat an eye. I felt like in the locker room, um, you know, nobody got down. Uh, you know, it was a hard-fought game, went back and forth. Uh, you know, our guys, the kid made a good kick right there at the end of the game. So, you know, it's just one of those things, there's, there's nothing else you could do. You know, you laid it out on the all on the line, on the field, and our guys left it out there. And uh, we got on the bus, and I felt like it was very positive. Um, and our guys yesterday were great in the meetings. So I think they've already moved on. They got their minds towards FAU. They know it's a big game coming up. And uh, so it's been been really good. Well, I think, you know, we didn't help them offensively uh, in the first two drives last week. You know, we turned the ball over twice on the first two drives, one on a trick play uh, through an interception there, and then on a third and two, uh, Ty, the ball slips out of his hands. We get a turnover there. And so they had momentum coming out of the gate. Uh, to answer your question, you know, when you play good offenses, you know, Marshall's a good offense. You know, Charlotte was a good offense. We're about to play another really, really good offense. You know, sometimes you got to weather the storm. And uh, I felt like our guys have really done that. After the first two scores, I felt like our guys kind of settled in, calmed down. And then second half, they were outstanding to only give up two field goals uh, and to put us back in position to try to go win the game. So, um, you know, and it may be that way this week. You know, we're going to have to maybe weather the storm some this week. This is a good offense. Coach Kiffin does a great job with his football teams. They'll really test us uh, defensively. Uh, I do think it's another game where offensively we got to try to get 30 plus points. You know, defense plays solid and holds them to a 20 something. We got to go get 30 something. Uh, if we do that, I feel good about it. No, I think, you know, they got two good quarterbacks. Number the first guy is very, very good. He's outstanding in my opinion in our conference. And then the, their backup's really good. You know, he's a good runner, good thrower, uh, can create and make plays. Um, and I don't think they'll change, to be honest with you, no matter who the quarterback is. And so we'll just game plan uh, for for whoever whoever the guy's gonna be. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to, you know, to be able to battle back. Um, but that's the expectation we have. Our guys know that. Um, you know, I was asked a question about the locker room. I, even at halftime, you, you couldn't tell whether we were up or down. The guys were looking to, for their adjustments, and guys were talking about, all right, here's what we need to do in the second half. Um, you know, our guys handle things like pros. They really do. They come to work every day. They work extremely hard. Uh, we preach all the time, get to the last five minutes of the game and then try to go win it. They understand that, that formula that we're creating there. Uh, it's going to be another one of those again this week. If, if, if it goes how it's supposed to go, there's, we're, we're a good team. FAU is a good team. It's going to go down to the last series or two. Just talk about what you've been the last couple of weeks. You know, really, this past week, you know, a big, big game for him. Just kind of what you want to see out of him as you move forward. Uh, I'm number one. I'm very proud of him. You know, he's he's really put in his time. He's worked extremely hard. He's he's like a coach on the field for some of the young wideouts. Um, you know, so it was great to see see him have the day that he that he had. Um, and you know, and Ty's very comfortable with him. I think he's really looking to 
to on certain plays that he's looking for lucky you know and and lucky's come through and I, i'll be honest with you i the stat that that we at the end of the game for to have that many catches i was surprised you know i didn't realize he had that many catches so but it was great for him to have that day and and we're going to need him down the stretch again to to continue to make those plays yeah Well, they played a little softer coverage. Um, you know, they're a big pressure team, and a lot of times when you bring pressure, it, it, you're either going to be a man or a zone team with your pressure, and they, they're a zone team. So they try to keep everything in front of them. They're going to give you a lot of underneath stuff. Our game plan going into it was to take the underneath throws, you know, take the hitches, take the, the stop routes, take the slants, the curls, all that, and then try to double move them. And we were able to do that. And so going into the game, uh, we told Lucky and all the receivers, you know, whether it was Quinn or Sloan, uh, JP, that, hey, when you're on the outside, it's, it's, it's probably going to be an outside receiver game. And it turned up to be that way. I know with the next one, you come bowl out with bullet. Is that one of those things you almost just get that win so that thought kind of goes away and you just kind of focus on the next game at the end and that's no longer the mind of the player and it's not really talked about? Uh, you know, I, I, I can't answer that just because it's one game at a time mentality for us. I think any time you're focused on, hey, this is going to be a, a potential bowl eligible win, um, I think you, you can lose your focus a little bit. And to be quite honest with you, if you get six wins, that doesn't mean you're going to a bowl, you know. So to be focused on, hey, let's try to be bowl eligible, to me, you, you have to have seven to be guaranteed. And that's really at this time that we may get to a point where we're like, hey, hope, you know, we need to get six or we need to get seven. Right now we're in the conference hunt, and we, we want to go win a conference championship, and that's our main goal. So we got to take one game at a time mentality, focus on trying to get this win against FAU, and then move on to the next one. Yeah, Coach Todd really took a beating this game, and he talked about the pressure that Marshall brought up front, but there were some big hits that Todd took, and it felt like he just kept going and going. Uh, what do you take away from his performance on Saturday? Well, I thought he was outstanding, number one. He's always been a tough kid. I mean, Ty really, you know, for him to stand in the pocket uh, like he did on a couple of throws and kept his eyes downfield and was willing to take the shots was, was huge. You know, a couple times, though, he, he was moving around trying to create and, you know, he took the hits because he chose to do that and, and it worked sometimes and it didn't. But, um, Game by game, he has just gotten better and better and better. And so the guys are really looking to him now as, hey, you're our leader. You're the guy that, you know, is going to take us to where we want to want to go. Um, and he embraces all that. And he just does a really, really good job of leading our offense and, and being a good leader for our team. As good as Josh Simon has been when he catches the ball and makes things happen, have you tried to you know, give him more of those opportunities or are you a little bit of both to answer your question I mean when we get in the red zone we cross the 50 and you start you know getting more in that plus 30 red zone area you really start to think about trying to get Josh the ball and and I think you you've seen a lot of that um, this game was a little different you know this game was like I said, it was going to be an outside receiver game. They were going to be soft on the outside. Uh, we did try to do a couple of throws to Josh. It didn't work out. One down in the red zone, Ty got hurried there, and uh, Josh was running a crossing route in the end zone. Might have thrown a touchdown if we, you know, if we didn't have the pressure. Um, so yeah, we're always looking for Josh. Sometimes it, it doesn't work out. Uh, as being as young as he is, I don't want to put too much on his plate at the same time. Uh, but yeah, he's he's always on our minds. Uh, but this offense is always going to spread the ball around and try to get it to, to everybody. Jackson Gage has obviously been a bright spot for this offense this season, but where have you seen him improve most from that first week where he made his first start as a running back to now eight games? I thought I thought the last game was really the first game he saw everything. You know, there's times when we go back and look at the tape, he makes a good run. And then there's other times where, like, man, he, he had a crease there, you know, and he should have seen that crease. And this game, though, I felt like his vision and everything, he saw it perfectly. Uh, made, made a lot of guys miss in this game, you know, second-level misses. 
uh, where we hadn't seen that in the past, you know, and so that was huge. Had two huge touchdowns uh, down there in the red zone. And, I, and I'm kind of used to those things, you know, where you get in the 15 to 20 area and you either make a throw or you hand the ball off and a good player makes a run, the next thing you know you have a touchdown. And it just makes it easier for you as a play caller to not have to go and drive it, drive it, get it down to the five, get in goal line offense, all those things. So that's what good offenses do when we talk about it. So it's great to see him finally start to do that where we didn't have to always just grind it out all the way down to the down to the end zone. And uh, I tell you another guy though, Keyshawn McClendon, he got a chance and made a really nice run, made an explosive play. Would like to roll him in there more and more. Uh, reason why we did that, we're getting later down the stretch. I don't want Gage to get totally banged up. He handles everything great, but I would like to get McClendon in there more and more if we can. Yes, yeah, so very much so. I, I think it's understanding where you're going to hit the hole and understanding the, the, the defensive front and what each front's weaknesses are and where the gap's going to be that you want to hit it. As he started out, like any good runner does, he takes it and he just he's using the force. You know, I mean, he's trying to he's trying to find his way through. Uh, but game by game, he's really started to start to see and understand what, what's going to happen before it happens to him. He can line up and say, all right, it's this front, or maybe there's some field pressure and the defense is going to slant, and so I'm going to have to cut this ball back. And so he's starting to understand those things.